If you go to your doctor with a problem, your doctor might prescribe a drug or some other treatment. And you want to know, does the treatment work? Well, unfortunately, too many doctors believe the hype promoted by pharmaceutical companies, and they're giving you data that, while not exactly untrue, is highly misleading. Sleazy, in fact. In this video, we're going to talk about the sleaziest number in medicine, which is relative risk or benefit. And before I get into that, let's go into some background about how we evaluate, say, drugs. So we, we determine whether a drug is effective in terms of improving our symptoms, in terms of improving our biomarkers, things like, things like high cholesterol, blood pressure, and reduction of risk of events, things we don't want to happen like death, stroke, heart attack, falls, stuff like that. We also have to ask, compared to what? Sometimes drugs are compared to nothing. We just give someone a drug and they get better and we say, oh, well, the drug must have been the drug. However, we know there's something called the placebo effect, which makes our minds get, make us better because we think we're taking a drug. And so we want to compare it to placebo. And sometimes we compare drugs to standard of care. So again, we're looking at the effectiveness in terms of what it does to us and for us compared to either nothing, a placebo, or a standard of care. Now, let's get into that sleazy number. And let's start with one of the most popular drugs of all time, Lipitor. And the data here comes from the Pfizer website, uh, the package insert for Lipitor online. And it says, Lipitor significantly reduced the rate of coronary events. Well, that's good. Significantly reduced and fewer coronary events. Coronary events here means heart attacks, or deaths from coronary disease. And the risk reduction, as we can see, was 36%. That's a whopping 36%. Who wouldn't want to take Lipitor? However, look at the next sentence. Based on incidences of 1.9% for Lipitor versus 3% for placebo. And this was, these are uh, studies for people who don't have a prior history of heart disease, but just have high cholesterol. So let's take a look at those numbers and see what it, what it looks like. So the risk reduction of 36% looks like this. Many fewer events from Lipitor than the placebo. So of course, who wouldn't want to do that? However, note here that the top number is 3%, which is what I mean by relative risk. We're looking at the two compared to each other. What if we look at the two compared to the total risk? Here's 100%. And now you can see that Lipitor and placebo are almost exactly the same. The difference is only 1.1% between 1.9% events in the Lipitor group and 3% in the placebo group. In other words, 98.9% .9 of the people in the study experienced zero benefit from Lipitor. Well, you might be wondering why this matters. After all, even a small percentage increase is better than nothing. Well, there's a couple of problems with that. First is side effects. So here again is the Lipitor insert. Muscle problems, liver problems, allergic reaction, including swelling of the face, lips, tongue, or throat, nausea, vomiting, brown or dark colored urine, more tired than usual, skin and whites of the eyes get yellow, stomach pain, allergic skin reactions, diarrhea, upset stomach, muscle joint pain, alterations in laboratory blood tests, tiredness, tendon problems, memory loss, and confusion. And these are not all the side effects of Lipitor. All those side effects might be acceptable if you really think you're going to get a 36% reduction in your risk of a coronary event, but it's probably not an acceptable trade-off if the difference between the drug and the placebo is almost nothing. In addition, there are often better alternatives that doctors don't tell you about and may not know about. For example, diet and lifestyle. Here's a study done by Dr. Esselstyn published in 2014 showing that the whole food plant-based diet reduced the incidence of coronary events from 62% down to 0.6%. That's an absolute risk reduction of 61.4%. Here's a couple more examples. One is tamoxifen, a drug used uh, to, to prevent breast cancer, and the second is a Mediterranean diet study. So we learn from Jack Kuzik, at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium 2014 that tavoxifen reduces the risk of breast cancer by 29% compared to placebo for at-risk women. What we don't learn at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium 2014 is that Jack Kuzik is on the payroll 
of AstraZeneca, the company that makes tamoxifen. Be that as it may, here's the study data showing that 7% of women taking tamoxifen had breast cancer, while in the placebo group it was 9.8%. So there's your 29% reduction in breast cancer. Well, you know where this is going. We're going to take the graph, and instead of making 10 the highest number, we're going to make 100. And now you can see the absolute benefit of tamoxifen versus placebo is about 2.8%, which means, in other words, 97.2% saw no benefit to tamoxifen. And of course, there's side effects and risks here as well, and these are pretty serious, including a higher risk of death from breast cancer. They may get a little less of it, but when they get it, they die from it more often. Endometrial cancer risk, uterine, non-melanoma skin cancer, cataracts, blockages in vein, lung, brain, and liver cancer in rats, and these are just the common ones. Now let's take a look at a diet study. We can also be misled by relative risk and relative benefit in diet studies. So here the New York Times reports in 2013 that about 30% of heart attacks, strokes, and deaths from heart disease can be prevented if they switch from a to a Mediterranean diet from whatever they're doing otherwise. So that 30%, where does it come from? You can see here, starting on the left, the extra virgin olive oil diet, 8.1 deaths. Mediterranean diet, eight deaths and the control diet, 11.2 deaths, and that's per 1,000 people per year. Again, when we look at the relative numbers, the Mediterranean diets, the blue and green diets with extra virgin olive oil or nuts, look a lot better than the control diet, like a lot less risk of dying. But again, instead of 12, make it 100, and we can see that the difference is only about 3%. In other words, 97% of people don't benefit by switching to a Mediterranean diet. Here's a useful resource for you. It's called the NNT.com. It's a website, and NNT stands for Number Needed to Treat, which is how doctors and clinicians think about the effectiveness of a drug or the way they should if they thought about it correctly. For me, though, for patients, we like to think about percentage helped or harmed, and the NNT has that option as well. You can click here and view it as number needed to treat, but I think it's easier to view it as a percentage. So again, here's that first thing we looked at, statin drugs, not just Lipitor, but all, for five years for heart disease prevention for people without known heart disease, and it's red here. No go. 98% saw no benefit, and of the remaining 2% who saw a benefit, none were saved from death, about 1% was pre helped by preventing a heart attack, and about half a percent avoided a stroke. Whereas the harms, in addition to the side effects, these are actual harms, not just uh, things that might be inconveniences that go away when you stop taking the drug. 1% developed diabetes, 10% were harmed by muscle damage. Now let's look at another one for statin drugs given for five years for people with known heart disease. Now it's much better, it's green. This is definitely something they recommend, but when you look at the percentages, 96% again saw no benefit. Here is about a percent were saved from death, 2.6 were uh, saved by, from another heart attack, and about 1% were saved from another from a stroke. And again, same harms. So you might decide it's worth it, but this is the basis upon which you should make a decision, not those outlandish, egregious claims of relative benefit, 36%, 30%, 40%, that mislead you into thinking that you'd be an idiot not to do it. So again, the NNT.com is a good place to go, but whenever you hear a giant reduction in risk, take it with a grain of salt. Be well, my friends.